and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the cheap Rossi RS-22. Now this rifle retails for about $100 US. Now you're thinking, well, what can you get for $100 US? You can get the Rossi RS-22. So for a rifle to be at this price, it's borderline unheard of. I mean, it is manufactured in Brazil where the price can obviously be brought down a little, um, and that's part of where they're saving on the cost, as well as a lot of other things on this rifle, which we're gonna go over shortly. So in Canada, I found it, well, I actually had to pay $260 Canadian for it, which, is a steep price to pay for this rifle. So at that price, I don't think I'd recommend it, but I mean, if you can find this one on sale, obviously in the States for $100, this one is well worth it. And I'm gonna tell you why. So uh, let's start off with a little bit of plinking. So we're gonna go over a little bit of the reliability of this rifle. So this is my second outing with this rifle, and this rifle has proven to be very reliable. Up until probably around the 350 round mark. So you clean it, you have 350 rounds of pretty much worry-free plinking, and it does very well within that margin. After that, you're starting to get some failure to feeds and well, some other issues, and it won't cycle subsonic ammunition anymore. We missed a couple times there. <laughs> All right, now, so just for the hell of it, we're gonna do a little bit of rapid fire while still kind of trying to stay on target. <laughs> now, this is really not the platform that I prefer, at least for, for sites. They just, uh, I'd say they're underwhelming. Well, we hit it a few times. Not, not that many, but a few times. <laughs> When it's clean, it will cycle uh, the CCI center velocity, no problem. Anything around, you know, even 1,050 uh, feet per second, it will do fine. So the match ammunition, it will do great while it's clean. Once it gets dirty, forget it. You're gonna need some uh, high velocity ammunition. And even at that, you're still going to have issues. So anything below 350 rounds, it will do great. So let's look at accuracy now. This rifle, I mean, at this price, your expectations for accuracy should be, you know, you should, you should hold your expectations. This is a cheap gun. Um, if it does two inch groups, I think I'm still gonna be happy for a hundred bucks. Anyway, let's get to the range. Let's find out just how accurate this rifle can be. I'm pretty hyped to see uh, just how accurate something of this caliber, of this price can do. Because typically, I mean, anything below 300 bucks isn't gonna be all that impressive. So, I mean, stay tuned, let's find out together. Oh no, we had a failure to what? Oh, failure to fire. Light primer strike maybe? There we go. Oh, I mean, it is doing pretty terribly. <laughs> That's some next level accuracy. Okay, uh, I'm gonna give it up on the CCI standard velocity. We're gonna skip over to the SK rifle match. Now, this is some expensive stuff, so it kind of like hurts a little putting this nice stuff through such a cheap rifle now that I know that it can't do well at all with the CCI standard velocity, and I mean at all. So yeah, I mean, let's 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 see how she does. Wow, that one like shot about three inches to the right. Mind you, there is so much creep in this trigger, it's nuts.
You know what? I think we may have a winner. I think the, C the SK match might just be pretty darn good. I mean, you guys saw how terribly uh, the CCI Center Velocity did, but... This is by far our best group, guys. This is very impressive. I'm actually, actually, I'm starting to feel this rifle does have potential. All our other groups before were like total crap. But this one, um, very interesting. So we were shooting at 50 meters, and I mean, this rifle is fairly accurate. I mean, you could theoretically compete in an NRL 22 match. You won't win, but you'll probably do okay. If you do, you know, if you test all the ammunition that uh, in this rifle and you find the one that works best kind of like how we did our best group I think was about 1 1.2 1.1 1 1.2 inches at 50 meters which for a cheap little plinker I think it's pretty darn good I mean what were your expectations <laughs> mine were two inches and up and I mean it did really well so for accuracy we are going to give it a five out of five for this price I don't think you can do better next we have the barreled action so uh this is very simple blowback design. Um, it's got a nice long bolt lever, which is very, very nice. I always complain how the Ruger 1022's bolt knob is just so darn small and inconvenient. Whereas this one, they got it right out of the park. I mean, I mean, have a look at this. You can just easily cock it and there's no issues. So, I mean, look at this one. It's nice and big. You can easily grab it from wherever, and it's it, it's perfect size for, for everyone's fingers, I find. So I think they did a great job for that. Also to note is the uh, the bolt does tend to scratch the round underneath. So if you are if, if you just cycle a few rounds, you're going to notice there are some slices into the lead underneath. That's kind of normal. I mean, for a match rifle, that that's, that's a big no-no, but for a plinker, it's not a big deal. And I mean, for shooting steel, for shooting cans, it's going to be fine. Now let's discuss these uh, these sights. So they are uh, iron sights, obviously, but they're not made of iron. They're just made of cheap plastic. They are fully adjustable, however, which is really, really nice. I mean, up and down, and they're really well designed, in my opinion. Had this been made of metal of any sort, I think this would have been a fantastic option. But, I mean, this, thing whole, this whole thing feels really, really cheap. Um, it looks like the first time you drop it, this hooded front hooded sight post looks... It's great having a front hood, right? Well, it looks like the first time you drop it, this thing is going to break off because it's so flimsy. And the next time you drop it, well, your front sight post is going to break too. And the same thing goes for the rear uh, sights as well. They're just made by such cheap plastics that I don't think they'll survive more than one accidental drop, which is kind of disappointing. Then again, you could just put a, like, a red dot sight on these dovetail rails on the top and you can just keep on going. The fiber optic on these, in my opinion, is just way too bright even in low light environments and in bright environments in my opinion i mean having the uh, fiber optic here in the back i find it kind of distracts from what you should be focusing on which should be the front sight post and the front sight post is so bright it's just it, it really shouldn't be that way in my opinion i would prefer something even like what the uh, savage 64f has just a simple little post it's not kind of like too bright and kind of overbearing on your target so in my opinion, uh, even just a black part here would have been great and a black fright front sight post would have been nice. So for the barreled action, we are going to give it a 4 out of 5. It did very, very well. It's scored very high in its category. Next, we have the trigger. So whew, this is probably one of the worst triggers I have ever used in my life. But, I mean, at this price, we're lucky it has more than a barrel. So uh, it has a very short reset. So, I mean, have a look at this. Well, first, let's just look at the uh, creep. I mean, look how much creep this thing has. Oh my gosh, look at how much that creeped. I've never seen a rifle with this much creep. Oh my gosh. Now look at the reset. So this has a, actually a fairly short reset, which is very desirable. If you want to do some quick follow-up shots, if you just want to hose down some ammo, this is a lot of fun. It makes, you know, uh, rapid planking uh, a lot of fun in the breeze. So I think they did pretty good for that anyway. Mind you, this trigger is a little bit on the heavy side. It's about 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, 4.9. I mean, we've been measuring this and it, it kind of varies by about, you know, about, I'd say 
a little bit less than half a pound, how much it varies. But for a plinking rifle, I mean, that's just fun. So for the trigger, we are gonna give this thing a three out of five. I have seen a little bit better triggers on rifles of this price, so, which is why we're giving it a three out of five. Next, we have the aftermarket support. So from my observations, the only thing you can find for aftermarket for this rifle is longer magazines. I think the Mossberg 702 Plinkster uh, it takes the same magazines because it's like the same rifle, pretty much anyway. And you can get, I think, a 25 round magazine, which is quite nice. So we're gonna give the aftermarket support a one out of five. Next, we have free floated. Is this rifle free floated? Well, from this side, it sure looks like it is, but from this side, it's definitely touching. So, I mean, at this price, I don't think they can, you know, put all that much more effort into this. I think they did an adequate job. I think they did a good job trying to get this to a uh, usable a, to an adequately usable standard. Um, if you really wanted to, you could drum a little bit away at the stock so that it is free floating. But then again, I mean, if for plinking, this is just fine. Uh, so no, it is not free floated. So let's discuss the stock a little bit further. Uh, for ergonomics, I think they did a fantastic job for the stock. They have these kind of like uh, texturing here so it can give you a good purchase. It's got these nice little grooves to fit you for your fingers. I think they could have done some texturing in here. I mean, because typically my fingers tend to gravitate towards these little slots. Also, the grip is of the perfect size. I have a large size hand and my hand fits perfectly on this grip. And uh, also the cheek weld is at the perfect height for these iron sights. It might be a hair low if you're using optics, but it's still quite good. And the length of pull is a little bit short, but that's not to be expected. So for maybe your youth, for a youth, this is ideal. Even for an adult, it's ideal. If you want this for a truck gun, um, I find they did a pretty good job at making it good for an adult as well. So for the stock, we are gonna give it a four out of five. Regardless, that is a kind of flexible stock. I think they did pretty well. Next, we have the warranty. So. This only has a one year warranty. And from what I've read online, it looks like sometimes you have to wait a good while to get your product back, which can be frustrating. Um, and they only, they don't cover sites. They don't cover um, superficial defects and they only cover you for a year. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty limited warranty and it's only for a year. So we're gonna give it a one out of five. So uh, if you want my opinion on this rifle, I think it's an excellent, likely one of the best uh, cheap budget plinkers on the market today. I would definitely recommend this to anyone who's looking for a rifle for their youth, for themselves, for a truck gun. This thing is reliable, up to about 350 rounds. After that, it's just, reliability goes out the door. <laughs> just keep it clean and it will run really, really well. Now, there aren't very many options at this price and I think at this price, they did a great job. So if you're looking to pick one up, check out the links in the descriptions below. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Also to note is we are gonna be doing a battle of the best semi-automatic rimfires. Uh, stay tuned for that, subscribe so you don't miss it. We, are, we have actually bought all of the semi-automatic rimfires. We're doing the individual reviews first, and then we're gonna pitch them against each other, see which one is the best. So, what do you guys think? See you next time on Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.